Hello and welcome to another installment of CR Wrestling Commentary. I'm your host, Cedric Kennedy, and I'll be going over my thoughts on why U.S. inhabitants hold Japanese wrestlers so high. Okay, so I've listened to Jim Cornette for quite some time and he is pissed. And I get it and I understand it that these people regale Japanese wrestlers female and male so high I mean like at a godly level okay I get it I know what's going on and I know why it's happened the problem is if you try to tell them they are going to rage out at you but hey it ain't like I get many views anyway I'm going to speak my mind and if I did get a lot of views I'm going to speak my mind so this is actually a history lesson. I'm going to try to make it short. I'm going to try to make it short. All right. Back in the day, NWA wrestling, the territories in general, that was some, some, some wrestling. It was, you know, the absolute appearance of violence down here in the South. You know, chairs, you know, I mean, like crazy chairs, spikes picks utensils you know it was the slow version of hardcore wrestling it was that's when hardcore was done right done safe you want to build up to certain things okay japan also had gotten their wrestling started and it was very bland it was it was an offshoot of greco-roman style wrestling from my understanding, and that's pretty much all it really was. He has suplexes and other stuff. Yes, yes, yes. But a lot of mat wrestling took place. Terry Funk and his brothers, and I think dad at the time, I can't remember. Um, they go to Japan. They show what they're going to do. And it's brutal. It's brutal. So in Japan... I hadn't seen anything like that. It was epic. The fans were like, okay, this is crazy. But at the same time, according to Terry Funk, it's like, what you gonna do? And not just Terry, but Stan Hansen and a few others even corroborated, hey, you know, these guys just came in, made you look kind of weak. What you gonna do? Oh, well, Japan had to elevate. They had to come up out of their thing and adopt something new. Because of that, Japan saw National Wrestling Alliance style wrestling as the God style of wrestling. Japan looked up to the NWA style. All right. So now you got trade going on. You know, basically those from the United States would go over to Japan. And if you want to know why I use U.S. inhabitants, just a small. I use the term U.S. inhabitants because I don't want to exclude people okay and I find it outright brutally wrong to say Americans when America generally is from the southern part of Chile to the northern most part of Greenland so America is a lot you know Mexico Central America Brazil Canada United States Chile and all these other little places you know it it adds up to the Americas. So I want, I don't want to say America as if they are not a part of this entire continent. So I want to be properly inclusive and not the whole rhetoric that allows people to hate others. And you're not American because it's like, no, they're American. They are. That's why I do what I say. Okay. Um, so the National Wrestling Alliance and New Japan, well, not New Japan, but just Japan in general, they have their things going back and forth. Ultimately, what happens is Antonio Inoki starts New Japan Pro Wrestling. And there are others that popped up before and after that are going, still ongoing today. And the thing is, <laughs> New the National Wrestling Alliance worked stiff. They work really stiff, but safe. Japan was like, it's a combat sport. 
we got to pass it off as that. Yes, it's worked. Even work shoots. Yes, they do that. But the fans there believe in their pro wrestling the way the Hispanic believe in Lucha Libre. It's it's absolute. You don't mess with it. Okay? So, now you got Japan wrestling coming up. You know, was it Big Japan Wrestling, All Japan Wrestling, and others that are popping up, New Japan Pro Wrestling, getting their mark. They're getting people, you know, they're getting Hulk Hogan and, and others that's going there. And So, okay. And Hulk Hogan, he was big here. And he goes there and no one really knew about it. No one knew about it. I mean, you don't get that information here at that time. In the 70s, in the 80s, and in the early 90s. About the mid-90s is when you was able to start finding, because you know, online became a thing. You was able to get tapes from overseas, or people that already had the stuff from overseas, you got a chance to order it and see it. I was part of that group. When you see, like, wait a minute, you mean what happened was people was like, wait a minute, because you see wrestling here in the states, you grow up with it, you see it as WWF, WWE, NWA, WCW, then you see Japan, and you get to see what people would say, mind blown athletics not only when they watch japan wrestling what they saw was people that looked like they were legitimately striking each other you got to see people laying those hits in you get to see that abdomen reverberate you get to see the head jerk to the side and the sweat fly off their face or their chest when they put them in a hole you got to see pain on their face people here was like that's real over there that's real that's what happened you get to see they got to see hulk hogan wrestle in japan wrestle with and against antonio inoki the great muta kensuke sasaki chono masahiro you know he they, you get to see these things although hogan was built up but you still saw it. And he wrestled absolutely different over there. They got to see Terry Funk and uh, Mankind. Um, I No, he was Cactus Jack. Wrestle in either death matches or just other regular hardcore type matches. And they wrestled absolutely different than here. In Japan, they had a longer work ethic, a stronger work ethic, and they got beat up. They got beat up quite often. If you watch those matches back in the day, you get to see how the Japanese beat the hell out of each other, took it a little easy on certain stars like Hulk Hogan. <laughs> you know, they took it a little easy on people like Kurt Angle, Goldberg, things like that. You got to see them take a little easy. They still worked a little stiff, you know. Back then, in addition to this, the females, they wrestled. Now, they weren't called Joshi, not at that time. Cornette got a few things off, but to get on. And at the time, they were just women wrestling, you know, that, that was it. You were a wrestler. You just happened to be female. So you were a pro wrestler. And you got to see Aja Kong. When I'm a Toyota. Um, Inoue. Like two or three Inoue's. You got to see a lot of others. Okay. Uh, was it? Hota. And Azumi Yumika. Uh, Yumika. Um, man. So many others. So many. I can see them. I just can't remember their names. And like it or not, respect it or not, a lot of big time finishing moves in the United States 
that people use here in WWE F or WCW came from those Joshi wrestlers. And that is the name that they came up with around the late 90s, roughly thereof. They called them Joshi. So to spell it here, it would be J capital O, which could be also an over there in the OU for Joe, uh, and then she. No capital I needed. You know, which they translate to female wrestler. Also, Joshi has been co-opted more recently into pop star Japanese wrestlers. You know, well, female wrestlers. Um, you know, the idols and things like that. You know, stars and, uh, you know. Female wrestlers initially underwent training no different than the men, but they were also harder on the female wrestlers. Men got injured sometimes. Hey, walk it off. Sometimes, okay, well, you got to chill. Just help around, do what you can, but you, you know, you got to do something. I know you hurt, but you're gonna do something. Female wrestlers and um, awesome or amazing Kong can vouch for this. You, you get hurt. You know, you twist, bruise or whatnot, both your ankles. You're gonna work. You're gonna you're gonna work like you don't have any of the injury. Your elbow gets bruised. You get tinnitus. It don't matter. You're gonna do what you got. To, you're gonna do what they tell you to do. They work them girls hard. So when you see matches of a girl one third or half the size of of awesome or amazing Kong or awesomely amazing Kong, and you see them throwing her around like nothing and sometimes slamming her. You're like, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> you, just, you know, just, it makes sense. Um, when you see that, and you know that these moves come from these females, you see that these females are doing these moves, and Maya Ad looking brutal doing it. Females are a little more flexible, actually a lot more flexible than their male counterparts, so a Northern Light Bomb, a Brain Buster, a Power Move looks worse. Okay, so people love, and plus they're females, males are going to flock to the females. But when you see these females performing these brutal acts, you kind of get captivated and you want to see more. So by the time female wrestling in Japan actually diminished as a true sport, stiff hits, Real trash talking, actual personal rivalries, and they throw them in the ring to deal with it. That faded by the time people really got into that wrestling. And what happened then was that people was like, female wrestling is awesome. Look at all the flips and stuff that they're doing. And the I mean, they look, the females, they still work. The male wrestlers, they still work. It's work ethic. You're going to get your mat wrestling. You're going to get your pro wrestling. You're going to get some strikes here and there. Now, personally, I haven't watched female wrestling in Japan in quite some time. I miss Aja Kong in her more youthful days. I miss watching Awesome Kong over there, but especially Manami Toyota, Akira Hokuto, you know, Azumi Hyuga. I miss seeing them, you know, um, a lot more too. Especially the young lionesses, I will call them <laughs> for lack of a better term. I miss seeing them because they put their all into it and it was brutal. Manami Toyota has been garnished with more five-star matches than anybody else that I've ever seen so far. Um, so people get into this. They get into it and they're like, Japan is where it is. Japan, you get to see different moves. You get to see different styles. You get to see different kicks. Shoot kicks, MMA style kicks and strikes and mounts and, and all this. And over here in the States, it compared to Japan, it looks absolute phony. But why? Because when you look at what's happening in Japan and then you look back then to see the Attitude Era, when you see Kurt Angle and Steve Austin and the beer, the milk, and then the mud wrestling of females, yeah, it's like this is my entertainment or my wrestle porn, but 
over there is like you look and just say I respect that what they're doing in Japan I respect that they don't do this crap over there is real <laughs> that's what people would do and so now you get a cult mindset you get Stockholm syndrome of this so now these people they are hung up over Japan wrestling the way J Japanese were hung up over United States wrestlers Terry Funk and uh, Bruiser Brody, Stan Hansen, John Laurinaitis, Vader, Hogan, you know, it didn't matter. They just loved the American wrestlers, but they didn't want the American wrestlers to outshine their absolute top Japanese stars. So an American, you know, it don't matter from what country in America that wins anything over there, their special events, they get a little upset. Some, you know, you got to be really over to win and be loved. And you win again, it's kind of like what's going on. I've noticed that. It's no different. You can go over there, you can speak perfect Japanese, and they love you. They love you, you know, but then you say, look, I'm going to become... Okay, I don't know where that stopped. It just turned off. I don't understand. But they say, you know, now I'm a citizen. Once you're a citizen, then it's like, hey, you know, you better know everything about Japan and you better not falter. Um, so hopefully this it won't cut off too much. Um, OBS Studio is ticking me off. Um, I don't know how to turn it off. It's just the alt, alt button or something. I got a new keyboard. So ugh. any case. So. Now, when you talk anything bad about any Joshi wrestler or any wrestler in Japan, you're going to get flack. You're going to get heat. You're going to get hated. They're going to be pissed. That's just it. You're not going to get out of it alive. Just deal with it. Um, and so that's pretty much the story to where it is today, to where it is, you know, and people are looking for something in Japan. They know not. They know not to look for it here. All elite wrestling, what are you going to get? What are you going to get with all the wrestling? You know, just craptacular garbage wrestling. WWE, it won't be garbage wrestling all the time, but it's not good professional wrestling. It's not really telling a story. Everything is still hodgepodge. You know, nobody has stardom anymore because no one's ever been built to be a star. They've been built to be an actor. You know, there are companies out there like SWE. I haven't watched their more recent stuff. We try to start from the beginning and work way up, but they might be worthwhile. New Japan Pro Wrestling. So WWE want to be and then not really being decent with any storylines or anything except screwing people over that people love so much. They don't know how to build a, a face or a heel properly. And they're trying to do it the American way where they need to do it to appeal to the Japanese audience. <sighs> so they don't, there's nothing, you know? So people leave there and they're going to start watching, you know, Pro Wrestling Noah. They'll, they'll watch All Japan. They'll watch almost anything but New Japan Pro Wrestling. People who are getting into wrestling are going to go to the WWE of Japan Whereas those who've already been there, seen that, done that, bored with it because they know what to expect from it, they're like, I'm not going to waste my time watching this. I might glance at it here and there, see what's going on, try to keep a little abreast of it, but mainly try to find something new, something better, something that's going to actually appeal and not make it look like, a, you know, don't insult the, the fans' intelligence. That's what's really going what, to happen. And well, actually, no, that, that is slightly what's happening. So all the people that are new, to professional wrestling, it's going to be another five years before, the, or maybe two years before they're like, it's the same old crap. And they do some research and they're like, okay, this is the same old crap. They're doing the same thing. Why do they keep screwing this person over? It must be a long storyline because Japan got a habit of doing one and a half year to two year storylines. And the problem is they work their wrestlers until they're injured because it's like, no matter what, you're going to fulfill this storyline. I don't care how you feel about it. It's like, dude, I can't get out of bed. My leg is missing. I don't know what to do. And they're like, hey, storyline, finish it. Go now. And it's like, man, like, don't embarrass us or we'll embarrass you. And it's like, ah, crap. 
you know, okay, hyperbole, but not so much. The missing leg is, yeah, hyperbole. So, th you know, th this is just me trying to ex give an explanation on why things are the way they are, why people just herald Japan wrestling so much, you know. And I hope I explained myself well. Uh, I gotta go. I gotta put this all together and see. What, I hope it ain't too much. I can hopefully I can splice it, <laughs> you know. Uh, but hey, anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. It's been Cedric Kennedy for CR Wrestling Commentary. Thank you for any likes, shares, and new subscribers. Thank you. Um, be working on stuff now. We got Amethyst Frost. Uh, week three tomorrow. Hopefully, I can get these the promos done for it. But with that said, everyone, thank you. Good night. Talk to you later.